and welcome to the In Game Boss Podcast. I am your host, Jeremy, aka your In Game Boss, aka your retro activist, aka the hottest man in the city of Oklahoma. Man, it has been hot the last couple of days, and I am burning up. My air conditioning is literally saying, "I can't help you, player." <laughs> like you, want, you I know we're at eighty three. You want me to bring it down seventy eight? It's gonna be a cool minute. But who else has been here for a cool minute is my second in command, Jerron. Hey, hey. Uh, A.K.A. the Grumpy Bear, A.K.A. Evil of Aku, A.K.A. Holy crap, if I go zero and two in more and more damn online tournament. Uh, oh, it's getting rough out there. <laughs> no, it's, it's, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of killers. I, I'm okay. Talk about, I was playing the ICFC and... Um, Luckily, Oklahoma got some got some major rep from uh, from a couple of other people who entered. You know, they were repping. One of them even got on stream and was 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 making noise. People were like, "What? Who is this person? They beat so and so. They beat who? You know." So that's good. The man that's with good. no name. <laughs> oh no, I know who it is. I we just we spar. We'll, we'll be we'll be we might even be uh, facing each other tomorrow night at our at Red Dirt Rumble. Uh, at the time of this recording, uh, Saturday's Red Dirt Rumble on. July thirty first. That is be coming back to be a monthly, right? Yes, that is coming. That is that is coming back starting tomorrow. Uh, that will be that will be a monthly, uh, probably last Saturday of each month. Um, the last sat last you know Saturday of that month. Uh, I will say, hopefully, people act right and wear masks or get vaccinated. Because I swear to God, if people can't get our locals canceled, <laughs> I swear. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I don't care what YouTube PhD you got. I'm punching you in the eye. If we ain't fighting a tournament, we are gonna fight outside. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, uh, lag and combos won't save you for me in real life. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, uh, shout out to Ricky, uh, Ricky McNeil, and Devin Cook. Um, they were so nice enough to do a special recording interview that is coming up in August. Uh, probably the second week of August. Uh, we'll have confirmed dates soon with the promo and everything like that. Um, it's called the Mini Boss Chat, and I have these two coming on the show, not together, separate recordings. They just talk about what's going on in our state only of Oklahoma and the fighting game community. So you will hear the story of the man behind some of the tournaments that we get here, and then a man that's been on the inside and competes in the tournament. So we get two different kind of sides of it with some special intel special origin stories special beef stories yes. there's a yes. lot of surprises there so you know we want i want to i want to uh, have it post on one day give it two days you know let it breathe and then give you the next part and let it breathe so you can kind oh, yeah. of just let it be i'm i'm excited it was a fun discussion this is not a normal like back and forth talk it is more just an open conversation we just have fun with it so it was enjoyable so shout out to both of them for um Oh, being yeah. on the show they are excited they are excited good yeah like good. i was telling you off, off the mic they, they're asking me it's like yo when's that coming out i can't wait you know they they they're excited yeah and i can't wait for the um the fgc to really you know dive into dive in with that and hear their hear their stories oh, and whatnot i'm sure we'll get a lot of hot takes from people i hope so because remember we are on every listening spot and this will be video on youtube Along with audio that you can find on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, and any listening spot. But remember, just look up the In Game Boss program. All our shows are on there. So you don't have to go find these shows separately. They're all in one place. And, of course, on YouTube, same thing with all our great exclusive shows on there. But with that aside, um, in our last episode, if you haven't watched it yet, definitely go check it out. We were talking about um, the Nintendo Switch OLED along with the Steam Deck. That is from Valve. Uh, we talked about the prices. We didn't really go into specs because... We, you know what it is. It's, you know the specs for those and stuff like that. But uh, if you haven't noticed, Jerome wasn't with us on that last episode. We had a special guest, uh, Jerome. So I wanted Jerome to kind of give his input about what he thought of the Valve Steam Deck. And will he be getting it? And if so, which edition would he like to get? All right. So, I mean, three versions of it, you know, uh, from what I've what I've uh, read and, and heard about the news – the majority of the editions sold were like the near six hundred dollar uh, model, the the top model. The go big or go home. That's that's the yeah, model. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, I want to fit all my games on there. Period. They're all the same specs. The only difference is storage options. 
Um, I thought that the SSD was a little bit more built in, more powerful on the other two. Am I wrong on yeah, that? Well, lowest lowest form it has internal storage, but the next two models are SSDs. Okay. And, okay. And, Just you want know, to clarify one's, that one's half one's half a terabyte, and the others a uh, no one's a quarter of a terabyte, the others half a terabyte. Okay. So. Um, but aside from that, the actual the 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 CPU, the graphics, all that's the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's so let's start off with my impressions. I think that they chose a hell of a time for this. Is the timing was almost perfect. Got mm-hmm. a bunch of people who were butt hurt that the Switch OLED is just a Switch OLED, a bigger, you know, bigger Switch, bigger screen, better screen, not a Switch Pro. You know, mm-hmm. so you got a bunch of people who are butthurt about that. And then Valve comes in like the same week or, or the yeah, week of or week after and says, hey, Steam Deck. So take everything you like about computing, uh, computer gaming and put it in your hands. And there you go. And um, I think it's right on time. I like it. I think it looks great. Will I be getting one? No. Okay. Um, there's no point for me to have one um any portable gaming i do or i don't i'm nowhere enough to warrant portable gaming beyond what i already have okay um i do like however that uh just the other day gabe uh gabe newen newell newen ah, gabe newell gaben as people call him did confirm that there is a uh if you get the compatible ssd you can upgrade the storage in your steam deck pretty right so so yeah yeah so you could go get the low tier 399 model and then spend another 120 150 bucks and throw in slap in you know a a larger capacity and there you go do you think that this is something that can go on for a very long time just upgradable stuff or is it to the point where there'll be a max where maybe a steam deck 2 will be made for that or could this be infinite upgradable for the rest of the time? Mm, well, the Steam Deck itself, the way it's put together, I don't expect anything to be upgraded beyond the storage. Okay. Um, it's it's looking at the graphics. I was looking at the, the stats and specs. You're not going to be playing anything in 4K on this. You're not going to be playing not anything on, in Not on handheld, right? But what about deck? Is that the same thing on deck? You can't do 4K? No, that's what I mean. The Steam Deck, you you, you can't. No, I the, meant the, like, sorry, not deck. I mean, connecting it to a, oh, a, docking it. Yeah, docking it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah would that still be still not going to do anything? Still not. Okay. Day. Okay. No, um, it's it's based on the the the, the GPU, and the GPU is it's kind of like on par with like a PlayStation Four okay. or an Xbox uh, One, which is not bad by any means. I mean, I would be jazzed to be able to play, uh, let's say, I don't know, give me a give me a, a computer, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'd be jazzed to play that on medium to high settings portably. That's cool. The Witcher? The Witcher. Yeah, The Witcher 3 mm-hmm. on medium medium to high you okay. know, settings uh, portably, you know, just running around portably. Mm-hmm. Um, the battery life obviously is a big thing. It's like, I think it's like. Four hours. Four, they said four. depends on. Of course, you know they said depend on the game and uh, how yeah. uh, how how your settings are. Yeah, yeah. So I would be surprised if you get more than three to four hours out of out of it on average. Um, uh, and of course, related to that, the comparisons how it looks like a Game Gear. And I know, we all know how right? Game Gear ate up those batteries. Game Gear, yeah. you got about an hour to two hours of gaming out yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Or um, or you could compare it to the Nomad. Oh God, yeah, Sega Nomad. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, geez, that takes me back. <laughs> yeah, the Steam, but I do like that they put track pads on it, so you can play your your real time strategy games or your city builders. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like what they're doing with it, but let's not have a short memory. Remember, just a handful of years ago, uh, they came out with the Steam machines, right? You know, Alienware sponsored various other company sponsored building these steam machines and it didn't really do too well like i, I don't even hear about them anymore i feel like the marketing was just not there for that product and also it, too yeah. this this idea is a little bit more fully fa- cooked yeah more flavor for this one it, it's more yeah. of like 
this is something that might be a little bit better for people instead of that one because it's more like, yeah, you have you have that product, but I rather just get a computer built than yeah, that thing. Exactly. You exactly. Know? The price that they wanted a steam machine for is like, why would I pay that? I could just go, you know, at the time, mm-hmm. as of this recording, you'll be lucky to build anything for, you know, six, seven hundred dollars. Uh, and get a graphics card. Yeah, my graphic card that uh that was out for a while finally came back in stock, hitting me at fifteen fifteen hundred. I'm like, well, better just find something different. So yeah, yeah they, these chips are not playing, man. These graphic no, cards ain't they, playing. They're 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 coming back down. Graphics cards are coming back down slowly but surely. Okay. And apparently next month, a uh, new sixty six hundred XT is coming out about three hundred and seventy bucks MSRP. Mm-hmm. So you can try your hand at grabbing that. Yeah. If you want, now, but mm. um, steam machines, the steam machines didn't do too well. The steam deck looks good. Uh, as far as the steam deck two or any or upgrade, build, upgrade path. I don't see it having one. It's one of those things where you get it, expect to get some fun out of it for, you know, a few years. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be, I don't want to get too eco, eco preachy, but. I'm worried about the level of e-waste because okay. you get these portable machines that you can't do any upgrading on. And we all know how the pace of computer generations, parts, upgrades, everything goes. So if you can get, if you can only get like two or three years out of these machines and then you kind of have to toss it, that's, that's pretty wasteful. So I hope that they figure some way to squeeze multiple years, like at least five to seven years out of these steam decks. Okay. We talked about it also on our show about like um, the fact that I think people were hoping for a, steam, uh, for an, um, a switch pro, but people, I think people made it up in their heads more than Nintendo said anything about it. So that's on them. Oh, they definitely made it up in their heads. Yeah. So, um, but on our conversation, I said that this is, I feel like that this and the Switch are in, right, even though they're both in the competing handheld market, they're really not competing at the same time because they're both for two different demographics in, in, a, in a weird way, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. because even though Nintendo is still not going, it's not as graphically as the Steam Deck, it's still going to have cheaper prices on on certain things. Certain things. Now, Steam. Va- let's be honest here. The Steam Store is going to be the cheapest for a lot of stuff. Let's let's get that out of the way. On Period. that point, yeah. but compared to sometimes with PlayStation and Xbox, Nintendo gets some pretty good deals from there. But Nintendo still has exclusives that still drives that vehicle still far and still go. So, and they're in stock. So, if, if anything, yeah. I said that PlayStation and Xbox should be careful. Because if they can't get their stocks in order, the Steam will will damage them. Uh, so I can see maybe, but when it comes to sheer pound for pound power, the the new Xbox Series and the PS Five outpace the Steam Deck on on every on every spectrum. That's that's fine, but we're talking about stock, right? Like that's great. But if this if they don't have if they don't have their stock order to have games for systems for people to buy, they got this lovely thing for the holidays to play to buy. True, true. If you can find, I mean, the, currently it's uh, all the batches are sold out, um, and eBay's already been squashing some sellers that have been putting you know scalpers that have been putting them up on eBay for you yep. know double triple the price. So we just have to see what happens on that. Yeah, but. Even it's though who has stock, but even though it's not graphically up there, it could still it could still be a contender for the PlayStation Xbox and still have better deals on top of that. So, like, if you put to me honestly, like, if you put Witcher, which I think Witcher on the Steam is not going to be a day and night compared to a PS5 in the Xbox Series. It might slightly look a little bit better, you know, with better like you know resolution wise, but just graphically, I I really wouldn't couldn't really tell you the difference other than my 4k is gonna look shinier but you're not gonna see a building looking more realistic it's just gonna be more detailed i mean but that's the witcher i mean the witcher that's like yeah came out you know x number of years ago that even you know the switch can play true true so if we're talking about something a little bit more recent or something that's coming up 
let's okay. say okay um let's say well i was gonna say far cry 5 but let's say far cry 6 okay far what? cry 6 is going to um i mean it's going to really leverage the power of the new next gen systems steam deck's going to be able to play it honestly dude it's tough for far cry 6 now to say that because like yes it's going to look better but it's Oh, that's a that's a hard example because it's like, if anything, I would say the Dead Space game might be a better example for that because okay. we get more graphical of that. Far Cry I Six mean, is hard. Yeah, I, I feel like all of Far Cry Six. Yes, it might look a little bit better, but they're still graphically so blended together. They all look the samey. Like, I don't know why. I feel like maybe Dead the new Dead Space. Well, actually, that's not coming out this year. I guess not, huh? No, nope, that's like, coming I'm, out. That's coming yeah, you're out right. Maybe next no, year. no, you're right. Because the new, by the way, a new Death Space game got announced at EA, um, which I didn't watch. I just heard. I just heard about it. There's it, a trailer. There there's was, a teaser. There wasn't. There wasn't much to see. I, I watched it. I like that they got you know Xavier Woods to host it, but okay. Yeah. So let's say the new Battlefield. Okay, That'd Battlefield a, 2042. Yeah, we'll see what happens because that's going to be the biggest challenge there because of the multiplayer on the online, how well that's going to run. Because, okay. like, for 720 handheld, it's going to be interesting compared to having it docked and see how that goes. True, but keep in mind, 720 handheld, smaller screen, so that 720 is still going to look sharp as hell. It does. Yeah. But how is it going to run handheld? Uh, wise that's, that's, that's the that's question the trick and the trick. and the connectivity because yeah you're going that, wi-fi that, that's that's the again, tough part of wi-fi warriors out there anyway especially especially this is going to be a multiplayer only game so it's it's all or nothing on that yeah. thing but who buys battle who i'll put it this way beyond bad company the first one who really bought battlefield for the single player at first i would say i'm in that category but they just it got lazier as the, as the series went, and I don't think they know what to do about it because they don't really care about character development. They just want to just have a campaign just to have a campaign, and I think that's what bad companies stand out because you you had character development with these people, and they just kind of threw out the window. So Yeah. And yeah, that's sad. I, I mean, there's that games as a service, uh, you know, games always online, that kind of stuff. There's that. There's always going to be that push because that's the opportunity to sell, you know, more DLC, more packs, things like that. Um, maybe they're missing but, celebrity like Call of Duty. Uh, I mean, maybe they need Rob Call Perm- of Duty. Ma- Call of Duty has a, a serviceable single player. It's bare bones single players. Like yeah, but they got celebrities, far. man. Like like w- w- you know, like Kevin Kevin Spacey when it was cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Spacey before he was you know revealed to be what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and and of course Angela Bassett, who mm-hmm. isn't one of them. Um, we need Rob Perman. In Battlefield, bring I mean, Rob we had John Bernthal and and Ghost Recon Breakpoint. So mm-hmm. Billy Bob Thornton in Battlefield. <laughs> I, honestly, they don't even need to spend their budget on that. As long as the online is solid and the anti cheat is on point, Battlefield twenty forty two um, has all the makings. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Steam Deck has potential. Um, the, the tech specs. Uh, don't give me any faith that it's going to be more than a three-year machine unless they find ways to make it run really run these games effectively. Like I'm not talking digital foundry. You got to squint and move real close to tell the difference. But I mean, I guess, man, I guess it just depends what you want to do with it, right? From Game Pass to emulation, it just depends what yeah. you want to do with it to make it last. I think yeah, I, mean, I think I think it'll last longer than three years. I hope so because that would be horrible e waste otherwise. Because I think that. Hopefully, people will get in the mindset of these games will be able to play like next gen games, but they probably won't be at the max that you want for this machine to go. And you'll have to yeah. get a personal computer to do that job. And I'm not even worried about the uh, because, you know, Switch has a lot of indie hits on it. Well, those indie hits usually come to PC at the same time, if not first. Mm-hmm. And the Steam Deck will definitely be able to run all of that. Just yeah. Fine. Let me ask you this so. question before we go into some news. I was talking to Jerome since I said, since if it's going to run 720 handheld, would it be able to make up with that with the frame rate? So, like, if a 750, could it run? Could all the games just maybe run 60 frames per second? Because he was talking about 30 frames. You said 30 frames would be fine, but I said, I would say, like, 
I, I think I think that's kind of unacceptable to me because the fact that it should run for the sacrifice of 720 screen, it should be running a lot better. Like it should be a 60 period and higher. Two words for you. Doom Eternal. Do you want to play Doom Eternal at 30 frames? I don't think you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to play Doom Eternal at 60 minimum. And here's the thing. It could pro it could probably do uh, a lot of the games sixty at sixty frames a second, you know, medium to medium high. Um, if you want to push it further, you can. But it if the screen itself is only going to reflect, you know, sixty frames or a hundred frames, you know, sixty hertz or one hundred twenty hertz, that's as most you're going to get. So if the screen's just a sixty hertz screen, or if you plug the deck into a dock, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um deck into a dock and the dock's linked to a um 120 hertz you know oled or whatever you'll do what you got you'll tweak the settings to squeeze that frame rate out so it really just depends on the game yeah and then that's where the battery comes in because you're talking they use portal 2 for example which is like i don't think that was a good example of what you guys wanted to do but portal 2 running at 30 frames can get you like six or eight hours like okay <laughs> yeah like you could have given us a better example of game but yeah that's whatever. not uh, well, I would go like this. The Steam Deck is going, it's cool, it's going to have a dock, and it's cool you can have like a monitor. It could be someone's gaming PC. I would say this would kick ass in Japan and in other places where space is a premium. Because, you know, you have a little dock, you have the deck, just put it right there, connects to your monitor, you're good, you're golden. Nothing else you need to do. Um, but it's not going to support, I mean, Nobody's saying it's going to supplant a PC. It's it's going to be it, it would be a companion at most. Okay. You know, people have a um a Switch and a PlayStation or an Xbox and a and a Switch or a PlayStation and a Steam Deck or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Xbox right. Game Pass, PlayStation Five, Steam Deck, PlayStation Five. We'll so. s we'll see what happens. Um, I know we'll see if PlayStation Five has some games to play. Yeah, because um, let's go ahead and get in some news. Uh, first yeah, bit of news. Good there segue. <laughs> yeah, bit of news. Uh, rumor talk report. We'll find out by the time this airs if a, if we get a confirmed answer that for bit uh, Horizon Forbidden West might be de delayed to 2022. This has been talked about way earlier that it was a possibility uh, due to the God of War talk being pushed back to um to release on the ps4 also so um it's not a surprise that horizon forbidden west is going there you know i th and i think the delay to me is more of making sure both games run well on here and maybe yeah. maybe honestly it might look better for a 2022 lineup with all the other games instead of just that game for 2021 that's my suspicious yeah. about it because it's like don't want a cyberpunk situation right i think at the same time it's more like Mm, would it be better to go and release, release it here or release it next year with all the golden games that are coming out? God of War and all these games. This would be a nice, nice lineup for the year, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it'll be nice to release it, you know, when there are more consoles in people's hands. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely one of those. So um, it is what it is. It's, it's another reason why, you know, it gives them time to get more PS5s out, but it also shows like I still don't need a PS5 <laughs> yeah. because the only thing I'm getting out of PS5 is probably better, just better, um, be smoother, smoother game for those. And you know, PS4 I think will still be fine. It's only if the game, if the my, if my console is really shaky and it's lagging bad and it's graphically not doing well, like if it cyberpunks it. Then, yeah, yeah. then, then, then we have a problem. But I doubt that they would do that to God of War and. Forbidden West. So no, they they're Sony is not gonna let them get away with that. But stranger things have happened. Um, yeah, stranger things have happened. I would say here's my here's my gambit. What I think they're doing. Sony knows that they have a console shortage. Yeah, they just announced. Oh, hooray! We sold 10 million consoles. Yeah, and the common joke is yeah, 9.9 .9 million of those are in scalpers' hands. Um, and and of course. You know how many of those 10 million are connected to the playstation store you mm. know probably less than 50 percent yeah uh <laughs> you know it, it, you can't connect it if it's sitting in someone's living room stacked with others but i think what they're going they're going with a the gambit they're turning uh lemons into lemonade they're saying okay 
if we didn't have this shortage, if we didn't have the pandemic last year and the the, the shortage of uh, uh, of chips, and PlayStation Five was you know released, was able to get in people's hands, etc. Horizon would be PS Five only. Ragnarok would be PS Five only. Yeah, a whole bunch of games would be PS Five only. So what they're doing with this is they're going to give you the PS Four version. They're going to give you the PS Four version of these games. But just like with Ghost of Tsushima, I knew this was coming. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna say, "Hey, you want the director's cut on the PS5, and the director's cut has such and such upgraded graphics." Uh, I think Jerome said they they sell you the features that you were supposed to get anyway. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like you can play your regular version on the PS5, but if you really want to show people why they should get a PS5, <laughs> get this director's cut. Get this director's cut. So that's, I mean, that's what Sony's doing. Like, I, I don't, I understand why I don't like it, but I understand why. Mm-hmm. So that's what I think they're going to do with Forbidden West and Ragnarok. Okay. Uh, you know, we're going to get a director's cut. So, so far, other than third parties, which I don't, I'm not going to go into talk about that, except for what are exclusive only so far coming out this year for PlayStation for the fall is basically Deathloop, I think. Uh, Kina, Bridge of Spirits. Oh, Kina. Okay, so yeah, the, two. Kina got delayed, but Kina's still coming out this year. I think. I think September. Now that you mention it, because yeah. I think Deathloop is also September. I think I want to say, but those yeah. are the two exclusive PlayStation games that we know so far. Yeah, um, yeah. Stray that game because I saw the trailer for Stray. Stray is not. It's not even PS5 exclusive. No, but it's coming out next year. So. Yeah, and now, right now, Xbox has a really good chance this year so far since now they got a lot of exclusives coming for each month. So this is a really good start for them. All right, now, look, I don't know if they're going to be in, if both of these cons are going to be in stock and we'll see what happens, but either way, Xbox is going to have a good fall regardless of the situation. Even if they end up beating their own records of stuff personally, I think they're going to do yeah. they're going to have a good year. I think um Switch is going to have a good year for the fall, you know. For with for the Metroid and Shin Megami Tensei and Advanced Wars, they got their ducks in order, so they're ready to go. Uh, yeah. with, even with the OLED, which I argue that I think that the fifty dollars I think the fifty dollars does it justice, but I won't get it unless my switch is broken and I need a new one. I think that's good, but those are catered to the new people. So anybody that wants to jump in the train right now, you get a really good deal for this. Um, yeah, yeah, and there are places like GameStop are doing trade in. Where they give you two hundred, two hundred fifty dollar trading credit. So really, you just pay the fifty dollar difference and get a a Switch OLED. Mm-hmm. You know, if you really want it to. And man, I, I don't know about you, but I'm missing these bundles. I like the I like when um consoles do these bundles. Like it'd be kind of cool to see like a Metroid Special Edition OLED with the game that comes with it digitally or something. I don't know. I just I, I miss seeing those little bundles with them. They're pretty cool. Console. Well, I mean. They the last More. time they did a console bundle like that, I think there was like the Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah, and know, it was and, the dock. It was the dock and the Joy Cons, I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, the there was the Animal Crossing um mm-hmm. bundle, but Japan only Japan got the one with the game and the Switch. We only got the special Switch. We had to buy the game separately. Um, so I mean, I like seeing these console exclusives. I'm not going to lie, low key. One of the other reasons I'm holding off on a PS5 is because I want to see if they, you know, do some special PS5 variant, you know, uh, console variant. You know, it's so. weird. I don't know why Nintendo never thought of doing like a Joy-Con game bundle, like, like for eighty bucks or like ninety bucks or something like that. You get the game and two Joy Cons that go with it to match the theme of that. Maybe uh, that, is that too weird? Joy Cons are, are eighty bucks by themselves. <laughs> I know, but man, if they could have done a good, nice price, and like knocks where you're like you're save that makes you feel like you're 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 saving money. Like I don't know, like ten, fifteen bucks or something like that. It'd be awesome. The reason Nintendo's not going to do it because they, they don't need to. to. I know. Yeah, I know. The only, last thing time Nintendo had any kind of bundle was their Nintendo value something last year the year before last where it's like you can buy two tickets for these games and then get this other game Dude, later but down the, the line but the ds's man they were a bunch of bundles yeah and different no, color things great. man the, they were the throwing metroid, those everywhere the metroid 3ds the the, the galaxy the, one there was just all the galaxy, galaxy the yoshi oh, yeah, yeah. 2d brandy, one brandy has brandy has a galaxy one there was a yoshi uh, and a link one there was a mario there, one there, there were two of the link ones 
you know, yeah, there was the Mario one, there was the Yoshi one, there was an Animal Crossing one, there was Pokemon one. Man, there they were just throwing it all out there. That's what I was liking. And then, yeah. Ho- and good luck finding any of them now. They no, of course, the, of course, of course. Ridiculously priced. Um, uh, but so- yeah, no, I would love to see that. Um, speaking of Pokemon, though, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just segueing this stuff. So- Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Unite. Uh, a Pokemon MOBA. So if you want League of Legends but without the toxic teenagers, well, find something else because toxic teenagers are everywhere. But Pokemon Unite is a MOBA. Unfortunately, it's catching a lot of heat because it's becoming increasingly clear that it is very much pay to win. Okay. Um, and by pay for those who don't know, pay to win. Um, you have your, your freemium games on your phone where it's like, oh, you can pay for free play for free but if you want to get here or want this or want that um you'll have to grind 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 for x number of days months whatever or you could pay us um, you know 10 15 20 dollars here and there and you'll just get boosted up to that, that level pokemon unite is suffering from that where if you want you know your pokemon to, uh, to have these certain skills or these certain items you have to grind and work to get them or you pay some extra money and you just get them. So let me ask you this. Are you fine with pay to win if it doesn't affect the game too much? Um, if it's cause, well, that's, but that's the thing. Pay to win in and of itself affects the game. Well, okay. So for example, for this, and it might sound stupid, but what did they do? What does it do for this particular game to pay to win? Like, cause I don't know anything about unite. I don't know how, it, how it plays. I don't I know don't, what it would do to make you win really quick. The Pokemon have different, uh, can carry different items. The items can do certain things, certain, le- certain levels of like a level 30 item level, whatever item. Okay. So if you pay to win, you're paying, you're getting these items right off the bat. Whereas for other people, it would take weeks. Does that, r- does that really unbalance the game? It's a, as a lot of people say it really unbalanced the game. It unbalances enough, noticeably okay. enough. Um, I guess because I guess I'm I'm asking because like, say you're playing a shooter game and someone pays to win so they can just get the best gun in the game. Is that still unfair? Even though he'd probably not be a good gun person, would that still unbalance the game though? In that in that aspect, it would give them an advantage that okay. is not as accessible or not access equally accessible. To okay. other people some people say oh yeah it's equally accessible just pay the money it's like but you shouldn't have to pay the money in order to get an advantage you know and not everybody can pay the money if you can't grind it out uh it almost it's a sounds subject it almost sounds like that if you do the pay to win you need to be in the category with other people that pay to win and if only battle people that paid for the pay to win people i know it's too hard in the yeah. algorithm to do that but if he I think I think that would be funny. Like, yeah, you pay to win, and you're gonna play with everybody else that did it too, <laughs> yeah. and it's still even yeah. out. Kind of like the whole thing with, um, you know, in some anti cheats, they don't ban you; they just only batch you with other cheaters. Mm-hmm. So you all can go cheat together over there. Yeah, but uh, you know that. But that's the thing with pay to win. It's it's like, you know, imagine imagine if Final Fantasy VII was pay to win, where if you pay, yeah, you bought the game for fifty bucks. But if you pay an additional thirty five, you get in game uh, equipment at the jump. Okay, that might be a little bit different because that's single player. So I think if if it's your game and it's you alone, you can do what hell you want. I have I don't yeah, care if it's you alone. Yeah. But now imagine in game level equipment, but you're also playing against other people. Okay. Well, there is that battle royale one that's coming out from Final Fantasy Seven. I forgot what it's called. So yeah, yeah. There's there's that. Oh. Um, PUBG and other things have uh, mechanics where you can pay to boost to get other things, mm-hmm. but it's cosmetic. Okay. You know, if it's cosmetic, I don't care. You know, yeah, wear your bunny slippers while I pop you in the head with my whatever gun. I don't care. But if it's stuff that actually changes, you know, can give you a distinct advantage, I could be more skilled than you, but because you have $20 to burn, you, you're you able to eke out wins. Okay. That's pay to win. And of course, it's got people pissed off. You know, you know how the internet is: mm. uh, high on piss and vinegar, low on critical thinking and reading comprehension. So, are you are you an, um, 
a fan you're not a fan of pay to win i don't play a lot of games that pass pay to win so i don't know how I, that really feels i don't i'm not a fan of freemium um i mean i understand the reason some of it's there like games like mario kart tour on the phone you know you can pay to unlock certain cards and tracks sooner i don't and i i'll touch it but as far as pay to win you'll never see me pay to win because i'm cheap i'm a cheap a-hole Mm. um so so but if someone else wants to pay the win more more power to them i wonder if i'm fine with it with co-op play like if i play with you and you just got the best stuff because you dropped by 50 bucks or something like that i think i'd be fine with that you know you better you better check me for you better check me for a zipper on the back uh, back of my body because i'm clearly a lizard person wearing this skin if i'm paying 50 dollars extra to win at a co-op game but we're talking about a bizarro you we're not talking about the now you like when i give yeah. you an example of you i'm thinking of an alternate dimension of you people Liz- need to Liz- realize that me. yeah and that's what people need to realize like if you that means that's the alternate you <laughs> All right, yeah, hypothetically. If, if you pay 50 dollars for co-op i think i would be fine with that because the only thing i have to uh, the only thing i would probably maybe maybe have a problem with is you kill everybody in one hit and I'm like, I, I can't play with you because it's not fun in that way. But if it's yeah. still, if they can balance it out like Borderlands where like I, I see my level of people and my challenge and you see your level of people challenge, like, you know, you're like, you know what I mean? Like about, uh, Borderlands did a good job of that. Like I'm level 13, you're level 50, but you're still finding people that are level 50 equivalent to me. For, for, I think that's it, so cool. It, scale, it scales everything yeah. Uh, appropriately. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's fine. But at the same time, it's co-op. We're working towards a shared goal. So even if I tend to, you know, I'm more powerful, I'm doing badass stuff, Mm -hmm. it's not screwing you over, you know, more or less, because it just means we meet our goal easier. But yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's like, let's say a fighting game where it's DLC, and this is where people got pissed with Tekken and Street Fighter, DLC characters where, you know, you had to buy the characters individually or the season pack. Mm -hmm. In order to play as them, but not only play as them, but to load them up in the practice mode to learn the matchup, to learn their moves, to learn what to expect. So if people didn't have that kind of money and they didn't know how to, you know, get play the matchup for those characters, they felt a little, it was a little unfair because you're encountering these sense. characters and you have no way to match up and lab them. Could you imagine if that was the way they did in arcade games? Like you got your butt whipped so bad in an arcade game, you can't pass this level. They tell you, hey. Do you want to go to the next level or you want to go to fight the final boss? Please insert another dollar. <laughs> I mean, kind of, it's kind of how some of the arcade games are. It's like, oh, I don't know if you remember WWF WrestleFest, the arcade game. You could actually insert quarters to replenish your life and your power in the game. Okay, um, I see. I'm not I'm fine with that. That's not too bad. It's better than, you know, putting an well. I'm trying to think. Like an arcade game, most of the time when you get a game over and you put another quarter in, do you get replenished back to three continues? Um, Normally, a lot. A lot of arcade games, it just depends on the game. Like some some arcade games, you get like two or three lives, and then that's it. Because the WF it sounds good, but also like it sounds it sounds shady at the same time. Like that sounds cool, and it's like if the game is super hard, then uh, yeah, I'm wasting my money. Yeah, that, and that's what, and and you just described what we call quarter munchers. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Steals. Yeah, except for that, right? Like, like if the wrestling was so hard, like so hard, like the moves were hard to do, but they're just excellent with it. Yeah, that's a total ripoff. But if it's acceptable enough, where like I can be fine with it, then yeah, I could, I could pay to live. <laughs> the pay to live yeah. method, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I that's what I hated about going to the arcades when I was a little kid. I wouldn't plan ahead, and I'd just have some a pocket full of quarters. And I would reach a continue, and it's like, crap, I'm almost done. Uh, I'm out of quarters. I got 10 seconds. And, and of course, you're not going to make it to the change machine. No. Get change and run back in time, you know. Um, so that that was that was a, a pain. That was a pain in the ass. But I don't know. So certain things like that, I mean, that that's the very nature of – the arcade machines back in the 80s and 90s it was to get as many quarters from i mean that's why some of the cave shooters arcade shooters were hard you were uh, continuing well it seems like um this the modern times has their own way for corner corner munchers yeah. <laughs> this is a this is a new digital way to do it for, yeah, for games yeah it's, 
it, it's, it's that pay. That's the pay to win. Arcade games are basically pay to win. I pay to get through this game and win it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but they definitely didn't set you at yeah. a um, advantage against the person next to you. Because yeah. the person next to you is right next to you. And they no, because they put the they put the the computer opponent up to like an, a ten while you're a a five. So, yeah. You, so like, <laughs> so you know. Anyways. Good luck for the Pokemon community. Hopefully, you will unite and go against the pay to win. But what else we got on the rest of the news? Uh, let's see. Um, PlayStation Five. So this this might make Jerome happier, or this might make him say, "Damn it!" Uh, I, he already so, texted me all about it too. I know what you're talking about. Uh, so everybody's going on about how the PlayStation Five has, you know, and the Xbox Series X have finite storage. You know, you get, uh, I think he was saying he only gets about 600, 700 gigs on his PlayStation 5. And that's not nearly enough to install, you know, a lot of games you want to install. Luckily, there aren't enough PS5 games, exclusive games that are out to fill it up yet. Um, man, I'm taking, I'm going to take all the shots at it. Uh, <laughs> but get them out now. If you, if you want more storage space for your PlayStation 5 games to have that, that snappy, you know, uh, you have to either well there was no option you know you had your external storage for your ps4 games but that was it well now there's a beta upgrade going out uh that allows you to put in specific specific ssds and use those to expand your storage so uh the thing is the sticking part is not everybody's clever enough to take apart their PlayStation 5 and find where the SSD is and take that out and put another SSD in and install that and then load up the, the, the PlayStation 5 OS or whatever and be on their way. Not everybody is um, uh, comfortable, capable of doing that. Or, or, comf- or comfortable. comfortable. Yeah, capable or comfortable. And nor should they be. You know, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that hard. It, whereas Microsoft has, with the exception of the OG Xbox, they made it almost easy all the time to replace the hard drive mm-hmm. pull it out put it something in done you know and with the xbox series they way back they said yeah we're gonna have proprietary expansion cards here it is plug it into the back boom you got more space and that's how simple people want it i'm not signing off on the price you know it's got a couple hundred bucks for an expansion card mm-hmm. or a hundred and 30, 150, I don't know. It is cheaper um, than the SD, SSD card for PlayStation, right? Um, well, I haven't done any price comparisons. Okay. Uh, because P- PS5, is you have to have specific uh, SSDs, but I wouldn't be surprised if they okay. were on par or maybe cheaper. Um, so, yeah, that's, 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 that's got people kind of pissed off because, you know, it's like, okay, so I was lucky enough to get a PS5. I only have this much space and I either have to move everything to this external drive and then only load PS five games here, or I have to find this specific kind of SSD, take apart my PS five and put it in there. You know, they're not making it easy. No. And, and, two, not- ter- and two terabyte SSDs. Cause those are the only ones you should really even consider getting two terabyte and above two terabyte SSDs by themselves are about 200. 100, if you catch mm. a good sale, 190, but that, once again, depending on the model that's compatible, mm. it could be anywhere from $200, $250. And see, now we're, in a, now we're in a bit of a split, right? Because now people are probably thinking like, well, eventually I probably need to do this and drop $200. Or do I wait and take a chance on the new remodel rumor that's going on, right? Which yep. I, I, my, my money's going towards the, the new remodel where they'll, they'll fix these problems and maybe they'll – Maybe deal with maybe putting a better SD card in. I, SDI. See, you you already. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good with words with this stuff. But basically, it'll be a better model and better way for for More people to enjoy. Friendly. Yeah, user friendly for that. So, and it sucks for early adopters compared to now for like us, where like we're in a good spot because we're like, well, we don't have it yet, and this new one can can solve all those problems, and we're in luxury. So yeah, and it kind of sucks. Time, the only time it, it has paid to be uh, uh, the, there are only two times I remember it has paid to be an early adopter of new consoles recently, and that was a PlayStation Three because you got all that backwards compatibility hardware wise, or the 
uh, the Nintendo 3DS, uh, uh, the, the first Nintendo 3DS, because they gave everybody those extra games. Yeah. You know, it was the Ambassador Edition. And That's like the only we, time I've known it was good to be an early adopter. Yeah, and when we talked about our PlayStation talk, I said that it's funny because most of the time when you do a remodel, you're taking away something. Like, like you know, with the remodel of the PS3 after the the first mo- the first model of it, you lost the backwards compatibility that was the PS2. You go yep. into PS1, you know, and then the next one was you. Well, you won't be able to slide a disc in there. You could just put one in there by the slider. So it's supposed to be like more more easier, but it's supposed to be less app- uh, appetizing. Look at the Wii. We went from the Wii, and then the last model came and do GameCube games. It's just yeah. oh we and it's small and it's easy. Here it yeah. feels like the new model of the PS5 is going to be ten times better than the first model, and that's a damn shame. I mean, and not to mention they would piss so many people off if like the remodel said, "Well, yeah, but you can't play PS4 games on anymore." Oh, people would lose. Oh, oh yeah, hands down, hands down. That's not worth it, and oh. you're charging the same price. Yeah, no, yeah, especially they got to do. Especially they got to do SKUs for all digital or physical. Hell, I would. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it threw physical out the window for this new model. I bet it'd be all digital. I can see yeah. that and just leaving it the way it is. That's that's the only reason I'm kind of like, uh, uh, you know how those people are at, at at the double dutch rope. You know, it's like, ooh, do I get in? Do I get in? I'm, what's how is Sony going to screw us over? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and that's, then you fall on your face. Big, I mean, I don't need the physical edition, but I still have a lot of physical PS4 games, mm-hmm. and I'd like to, you know, carry them over. Um, yeah. And that'll probably be the last time I really buy physical because, honestly, I don't mind, I don't mind digital, but that's a whole nother can of worms. But I will uh, say this, man. Like Jerome told me, he is this close for just get rid of CS Five and go for Xbox. And right now, for Xbox not doing selling as fast as PS Five, I feel like Xbox is in a good position. Of it sounds like that the long run for the Xbox seems more appetizing, you know. Like yeah. right now, they're make they're saying the right things. They're making the right moves, and it looks I like you, it's every other generation, every other generation. I know, right? And this is the final one for this trilogy, because you know they won the first one. PlayStation won this last year's one. Now here comes this one. So it's interesting. Yeah. While it's, while Nintendo's it's, on the side, like we just we still making money. Don't worry about us. Yeah, you know Nintendo's what? like we're we're profitable until the Earth spins into the sun. We're not worried. Yeah, yeah. y'all do you. I'll, all we have to do is just mitigate risk. Right. We'll be beside y'all no matter what y'all get. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you know, no matter what, there will always be a Nintendo. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it Sony is being, you know, Sony. They're being arrogant. And unfortunately, it's it's coming. It's going to come back to bite them. I mean, hell, I'm still tempted to go Xbox series before I touch PS5. I've, I'm almost there with you. If my PC gets pretty modeled up, I might be pretty good with just my Switch and my PC f- for now. Um, but if I had, if it was this console talk, the Series X is sounding really good right now. I might, yeah. I might go with them. I might, I definitely might go with them. Not Even, to mention, you can pay like twenty bucks for developer tools on the console, and you can load up emulators and play ROM, ROMs of yeah, other games. The only part that would hurt, which maybe if I find a PS5 in the wild or something in the future, I will miss those exclusives I love. They have, PlayStation will always have those exclusives more I love than Xbox, but it's not the end of the world either. They'll, so. they'll still be there. They'll still be there. Um, I mean, something that that I do like with the PS5 is that they have the, the hits, uh, the PSN hits, mm. you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Eh. Sorry, I had to close up. Yeah, um, yeah they, they have the PSN hits. So if you have PlayStation Network and a PS5, you get the some of the best hits from the PS4 on there. Right. That's great for new people. But for you and me, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know? so. Um, so yeah, uh, Game Pass has been just killing it. Okay. I mean, that, this this game, The Ascent, that's that's coming out or came out, it's, gonna, it's on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Like, I think feasibly you might be able to just go ahead and load it up and download it on your computer right now. Oh, um, yeah, I gotta renew my Game Pass. <laughs> I haven't I haven't touched my Game Pass in a while. Um, I've been I've been on auto renew and I I have not touched my Xbox. It's it's kind of shameful. I've basically been throwing throwing fifteen dollars out the window like a month. Yeah, you better you better go make up for that. Go make up for years worth. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I may have to do that. I may have to do that. So is there any other news we got before we go into um, our other uh, talk? Well, we already talked about the Steam Deck. Um, we touched on Battlefield and Dead Space, but to make it clear, EA, EA did have a little EA event last uh, at the time of this viewing. At the time of this recording was last week. By the time you and home uh, listen to it, it'll be two weeks ago. Uh, they had a little EA event. And it was mostly uneventful. Had a good host, but the announcements were like, okay, I expected that. I expected that. Meh. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did announce Dead Space. They're remaking the first one from the ground up. So, Shout out to Visceral Games that got cut off, and now they're redoing theirs. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, hey, thanks for your IP. You're all fired. Yeah. We made this. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Um, so it, and in a way it kind of makes me want to go back and play the first dead space again. Um, I got part way through it and I stopped because part of it was, it was creepy as hell. The other part was, it looks like if you end up yeah. playing it on the PC, you have to do the EA access. So kind of, that's fucking stupid, but okay. Yeah. yeah let's uh, put that out there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but, uh, I mean that that's, that's EA for you. I, I can't speak too ill of them. Um, uh, my my uh, my girl just bought the Sims expansion pack for cottages last night. So good for her. Uh, she's, good for her. she's firmly in EA's pocket for the moment. Okay. And um, then what's your thoughts on the battlefield? Yep. What's battlefield your thoughts? 2042. Please EA don't this up because I kind of want to play it just because of the cross one cross play across consoles or at least Xbox and PC. Mm-hmm. Two, they're bringing back, you know, the maps from Bad Company 2, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1, I think Battlefield 1, or Battlefield 5, uh, and Battlefield 1942. And three, they uh, the Battlefield Portal feature, which it goes in the complete opposite direction of the Battle Royale stuff. And it's like, make your own game modes, mix and match, you know, do crazy stuff. And add that with the maps that had all the terrain and land mm-hmm. destruction and building destruction. That seems like a lot of fun. And add on to that, that on the PC, like on, on those huge maps, you have like, what is it, 256 players. So that's like 100 yeah. and, yeah, 120 uh, or 132 or 130 whatever players on each team. That's, yeah, and in last gens, it's like 64 only. Yeah. Yeah. Still. I mean, I'm I'd be playing it on PC, but still, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I don't even have a hundred. I, I barely have. I barely have ten friends I'd squad up with. Right. So right. Um, yeah. So it's it's it, it's very interesting. It's very interesting, and I, I like what they're what they're trying to do with this. They're trying to reclaim the throne because I Duty has been spanking them. I am a wait and see. I need to see what's going on. It's one of those like it looks good for what it is but i need to see how it's going to play in action and how people how people are going to um accept it i need to yeah. see i need to see how it's accepted and how because that portal sounds cool but i need to see how much range are they letting people have with it with the construction and the modding and all that stuff i need to see what they are capable of if it is good what i think it is then i'll probably be all in i know pc is going to have the best yeah best thing for yeah. it so I, I wonder. Mean, the best modders are going to be working on the PC. So. Yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to get it on day one. Don't don't get it twisted. It's not day one. Okay. I want it. I want it, but it's not a day one perch. Very few games are. But I will be keeping my eye on it. Okay. I will be listening closely. Okay. So that's um, it for our news. Um, this is going to be a short episode. So we're going to just talk about quickly um, what games we have been playing and just see where the conversation goes. And so. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, knock kn- knock on it first. Um, so I actually stepped away back from consoles on the TV and really focused on the Switch because I was like, I was looking at my Switch one day, and I was like, you know what? I am not paying attention on this. All I've been using this for is watching Hulu and playing my other games because you know, <laughs> you know, and I, I and I enjoy watching Hulu on the Switch. I do. Uh, it runs really well on it. You know, I do I wish that they had other stuff? Sure, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so I was looking at my library, I was like, you know what? I have um I have the fire emblem I need to get through. 
I have Astral Chain I need to get through. There's digital games on here I need to get through. Uh, I actually messed around and bought Bioshock 2 and Infinite on the Switch. They, oh. they were on sale. I could have got the you collection. Just bought those two? You didn't buy the collection? I didn't want to because I, um, I, dude, I have, I have this collection on PC. I have it on PS4. So like, I and <laughs> the only reason I picked Infinite because of course, if you listen to our Perfect Ten episode, I give it a ten for Infinite. Yep. But I wanted to replay two again because I wanted to see how I felt about it now than what I felt then. I only, I only beat it once, so I want to see if it aged well in my mind. And so, and I don't need to play the first one because I already kind of know the first one pretty well. And two is supposed to improve on that. So I want to see how 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 it is again. I haven't started on them. Um, the game I've been trying to play and finish is Tales of Vesperia. So if anybody knows, I'm a huge Tell fan. I have like almost every Tales game that I can get my hands on. Um, I have I actually have the un, a, unopened one on the PS4, and I bought the digital version on Switch. So and I need to get through that game. So uh, for the past week. I've been just hitting it an hour a day, maybe an hour and a half. I'll play another hour tonight of just trying to get through it again. And, man, I do not remember that game for a lot of things because the last time I played it was on Xbox 360 because that was the last place it was because we didn't get the special PS3 edition. It was only in Japan. So playing this with all the new characters and extra story in there is really cool, and it still plays really well. And whatnot. Helps you remember the mechanics too by just doing a little bit at a time. Yeah, yeah. And the mechanics, they're not, they're not, there's no day and night. It's more of improving on what's what it's basically capitalizing what they have. So you're not not every bathroom is gonna be different. It's not like a Final Fantasy to me. Like some Final Fantasy games, they just change the whole thing up. Um Yeah, yeah. I've I've forgot completely the mechanics in Final Fantasy twelve, and I've been playing the hell out of it yeah. uh earlier this year. Completely Be- forgot. I'm screwed. Yeah, because I still have over here. I still have Persona Royale, uh, Persona Five, Persona Five Royale, and Final Fantasy Seven that I still haven't touched on wrapped yet. And I still have some other games on the PS4. But I was like, you know what? I need to focus to get all these Switch done. It's like Astral Chain is the game I've been hyped for, and I just haven't really put enough time into it. So I'm going to do it as soon as I beat uh, Tales of Vesperia. And then I've been trying some dim. I bought- download some demos. Um, I, bought, I downloaded Torchlight 2, but I haven't touched it yet. It's on. It's, it's downloaded, so I'm going to get the demo a try and see how, how that one is. Uh, I haven't played a, a overhead RPG in a while, so I, or Dungeon Crawler, I guess is the better term for that. And then uh, I, I did buy Mafia, the, the, rema- the remake of it, but that's going okay. to sit there for a while. I ain't going to get to that. And I think that's basically it i have the mario collection but i mean i played those so many times like i i thought i felt like in my mind like hey i need to play those but it's like it ain't going nowhere i play these games like a million times so like i'll get to that whenever i can but fire emblem i bought that like a year ago i can't <laughs> i my back catalog i'm starting to learn as a back catalog person they're just games that i'm just gonna skip i'm just never gonna play i'm like you know what just never gonna play this no matter how many times i try to convince myself i'm just not i thought i can in the moment but i'm not Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. If it's one day that I completed all my games and I really don't have anything, I'm trying to save money. Those are the those are the backups for those. Those are the backup backups. Yeah. But for for now, yeah, there's these games are in my way, and that's probably once again we talked about how we changed as a gamer on one of our episodes, which is like one of our popular ones. Thank you for everybody for listening to that one. Is that I'm not in a rush for anything new because I have enough games that I can get through. Yes. So I'm I'm pretty good, and that's why like I'm not. A, that's why I think day one is just out the window for me. I'm like I'm not a day one person because I got plenty of games to do. I have Red Dead Two. I know that game is gonna be freaking long. Not gonna get. I want to play the first one. And I'm going Average to play th- twenty to thirty hours if you just play straight through. Yeah, and I need to get through. I need to get through those. So there, there's, there's plenty. I got plenty of time. If I end up getting a new console, it'll just be so I can play these games in a better condition. But other than that, I'm really not. In a rush, and then these sales sometimes. Sometimes, hey, I mess around. And I'm like, pop it over here. I bought. I actually uh, the other the uh, last couple episodes you talked about. You bought the whole collection of like Double Dragon and all that. I bought that. It's on oh, Switch. Oh, the Cuneo. The yeah, Cuneo it's on Switch. Yeah. yeah, I bought it. It was on sale for like ten bucks. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. That's a lot of games. Yeah. You it's get awesome. Super dodgeball. You get the Double Dragon yeah. games. You get a bunch of Cuneo games that we yeah. didn't get. Those games are gonna be there. Whereas like. You know what? I'm, I don't feel like thinking. All right, let's pop this in. So yeah. whatever. 
And most of them you can knock out in an hour or less. Yeah. yeah. So my Switch library is, is looking pretty good right now. So I want to focus on really getting through some of these Switch games. So that's where I'm at. What about you? Oh, boy. Um, let's see. Oh, I messed around and accidentally opened something that just opened in front of everything on my screen. Here we go. Luckily, um, I'm not sharing. <laughs> uh, so... I, I'm also in the uh, kind of a backlog camp because every time I get started on something, something else comes out and it's like, ooh, good deal. I might snack that. So mm -hmm. um, and this is not for me, but I did get that Kingdom Hearts story, so like the complete story. I got that for, for, for uh, Brandy. And I'm on the third one. I need to wrap that up. But at the same yeah. time, I went on the giant marathon game like, I need a break or I'm just not going to like this game for what it is. So. Exactly, I I have a backlog. I still need to go back to Lunar Two and finish playing that. Me too, because of our yeah. sh our show that is not aired, and we don't know when we're gonna air it. Yeah, but yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have Ghost of Tsushima sitting on my shelf. I have uh, that I haven't opened yet. Yeah. You haven't started that game at all. I haven't started it at all. Oh I wow! To. I can't mean to. Maybe I'll start it this weekend. I don't know. Okay. Um, but I've been I've been taking breaks from play the Tekken grind because. Honestly, I don't know how some of these folks have such a crazy chill uh, mindset about it, but uh, some of the, the online aspect pisses me off so bad. I have to like st take a step away from the game for like a day, if not like several days, because I get so pissed off. And when I'm pissed off, I play horribly, mm -hmm. at least online. Um, so I, I've been taking breaks and playing um, Cities. City Skylines. It's okay. Like Sim, it's it's the heir apparent to Sim City because they haven't released a new Sim City game in years, and they probably won't because City Skyline has just taken it taken that shit and, all over. That and it seems like it evolutionized into the Sims, so it seems like that's a new direction they want to just stick with. Yeah, and and City Skylines, it, I, I like how it it lets you go as deep into the minutia of running a city as you want to be, as mm -hmm. you want to. You could just set up set up roads set up regions and plop down buildings where needed or you could go into okay i like this intersection but it's a little crowded i'm going to switch this intersection from stop signs to a traffic light or i'm going to make this entire straight away all um uh you know stop signs on two sides so people from the other streets have to stop it's like i'm going to lay this out the way oklahoma road should be laid out Right. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to put a budget into the road maintenance. Um, so it's it's I like how it lets me get into the minutia and it's and it's relaxing because anything that happens, if something bad happens, I know it's on me and I know why. Um, so it's it's relaxing. It's it's my chill. It's my chill out game. And okay. I think that's what I've needed for a long time. Another chill out game. Um, I I have occasionally been playing. Chrono Trigger, although I'm going to give that a break because I beat it two times. I'm, I was trying to max my characters out. I'm chilling on that. Which um, needs to come to the Switch. Why yeah. is it not there yet? I don't know. We get um, There's more manas than anything in Final I, Fantasy. I, I will say, it. it there are, a, I mean, the Switch, Nintendo Online or whatever, they're like, you got RPGs, you got... Breath of Breath of Fire, there, there you go, you know. But bring where's Super Mario RPG on the Nintendo Switch? You know, that not is, everybody got that Super Nintendo Mini console. That, that is weird. RPG? I'm surprised. I'm where, surprised. Where's Chrono Trigger? You know, where's um, where's I, I know the some third party games they're not going to do because they're like we rather re-release them ourselves on your store and make money. You know, you're not going to see Final Fantasy. Uh, two slash four or three slash six mm. on there. Not with not not with the, not, not with the pixelated to. edition out. Exactly. Oh, and the other thing, uh, side news: they pulled some of the Final Fantasy games, previous Final Fantasy games, from Steam Store. Not surprised. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't own them, you're not going to be able to own them. All right. That sucks. But yeah, I've got a nice stack of games. But as far as what I've been playing, like I, you're making me want to get up and go in there and look. But um, I, I, it's been mostly Tekken Seven because I've been tr I've been trying to take it a little bit more seriously, um, and um, and City Skylines. Okay. I will I will say this Tekken Seven's proving 
I am an old man, Jeremy. I am an old man. I don't have the reaction time, and I don't have the sheer dearth of chunks of time to commit to this game. I, I understand. Don't. I understand. I, F- fighting yeah. is fighting is a young game. Fighting games is a young game sport. Yeah, it's a young man sport. The guys who are my age, they are more like coaches and commentators. And it's like, okay, I can get on that. Yeah, you should. That. You should. Um, they call you yeah. sensei. It, it, that, that's the thing. It's like I will be, I will be the Jr. The Jerry Lawler. I don't have to be the John Cena. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, some, I will say some games. I'm looking forward to getting back into. I'm looking forward to finishing Red Dead Redemption Two. Okay. Um, I like to finish that. I'd like to. I want to finish a few games before I start another damn RPG because that's, I know that's going to just eat me up. Mm-hmm. Um, Streets of Rage 4 got DLC that came out this week. Mr. Mr. X Nightmare. I kind of want to get back into that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I've been enjoying beat em ups. They're my, like you said, they're my turn off, turn off the brain and chill. Yeah. yeah I need to get spot. Uh, next time I see a cell for Scott Pilgrim on the switch, I'm probably going to cop it. Oh yeah. 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 I got the physical, but um definitely snag it snag snag that scott pilgrim especially you know they they put the, all the content in there too mm-hmm. um so yeah i i've got i've got a hell of a backlog as as well that's probably why i haven't i haven't bought too many like i haven't bought any new games i've bought games but they're not new games mm-hmm. they're 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 old games that have been out for. for so a you hot didn't day. buy anything for the summer sale, did you? Did you buy anything there? The, the Steam summer sale. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that you mention it, I, nothing new. But I did buy. Hold on, let me right click on this. Um, I did take advantage of the the discount on Far Cry Five and Far Cry New Dawn. Okay. And Titanfall Two. Okay. And uh, I. <laughs> I'm telling on myself, but you know what? I don't give a shit. I bought that uh, that game, House Party. Now, anybody who doesn't know about House Party, you can YouTube it, but it's it's pretty it's pretty much a crass, crass, crass. If you type game. in House Party, it's going to take you to a 1990 trailer of the movie, followed by you should check out our review talk or just movie discussion of House Party <laughs> on. The YouTube page that is the end game boss program hosted by Nam and I call when Jeremy met Nam movie discussions Just throwing it out there. Anyways, Has- now talk about shameless plug. Yes. Now back to your house party video game. That's not based on the movie. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's a very independent, it's an early access game and it's, it's essentially, uh, it's essentially puzzle and smut, but okay. it was, it's funny. It's, okay. it's funny smut sometimes. And Leisure Suit Larry, uh, one okay. of the Leisure Suit Larry games, because that's that's just classic. That's just old school, eighties, nineties Leisure Suit Larry stuff. It's actually, I'm not gonna say funny. It's interesting playing some of these older games, especially PC games, and realizing, oh man, some of this stuff would not fly today. Of course, actually, most of this stuff would not fly today. There would be so. Oh hell no. So. Mm. Okay. But yeah, that's essentially my what have I been playing? I've I've been playing mostly the game of backlog catch up. You know, it's funny you were when you were talking about building Oklahoma in your in your game of. I don't know if you saw the Ghostbuster trailer. Oh, Afterlife. Yeah. yeah. So I was doing research, and the town that they were talking about is in Oklahoma, Somerville, Oklahoma, and I was like, oh, really? And of course, I get fooled again. Shame on me, and shame on anybody that tried to find out about this place. Because there's no such thing as a Somerville, Oklahoma. It was all filmed in Canada. They called it there. I'm like, why don't you just call it a made up place? Why does that have to be in Oklahoma? Why are you hurting feelings? Why are you hurting feelings uh, over here? I looked at that. I was like, wait, hold on. I looked at that place. I'm like, man, that don't look like Oklahoma. I know, but I want to find where that is. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean. You got you got to stick in like a home, uh, a heartland place to pull in all the hayseeds. Apparently, they were better off putting that in Kansas. It's more believable in Kansas because there's nothing True. going on there. True. Uh, I mean, I'm to be honest, you pick the right areas in Oklahoma. There's nothing going on there either. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, uh, and Kansas got Jericho that old, that short lived TV series. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Jericho, uh, <laughs> Jericho. 
but um, no, I, 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 I'm liking Ghostbusters Afterlife. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll see it day one, but I definitely want to see it. Okay. Okay. So, what about you? Um, makes me want to go watch the first one again. Um, okay. I was always wondering, and we might have to. We'll probably leave it off of this, but like, I, a lot of comments I've seen saying like it brings a lot of people's tear to the to their eyes, and they're like overly excited and everything. And I'm like, what is it about Ghostbusters that just affects people so hard like i was late to the party so i'm definitely not in this loop like i did not watch go i did not watch ghostbusters the movie i seen the cartoon um yeah, but, i watched the cartoon but i don't i never really got watched the movie that hard it was probably about i want to say a couple years ago when i finally watched ghostbusters for the first time didn't watch the second one whole world recommends not doing that want to keep the memory that i like so i stayed with one one in the head. Um, I haven't seen any other Ghostbusters. Not even the 2016 one. Um, so, but I wonder, why Why is Ghostbusters so dear to, to a lot of people? I wonder. It's the nostalgia. It's the nostalgia glasses. I mean, if you think, if you sit back and think about it. I get the nostalgia. I guess, why, why is this such a, a very special nostalgia? Because we got a um, lot of special nostalgia stuff. I mean, that's the thing. For people who are like under the, who weren't even born for people who were born like 2000s and after i don't know why there's so much in why they're like super die hard about ghostbusters they're probably just being a-holes about stuff like the 2016 movie 2016 movie you know i wasn't super impressed about but i didn't think it went and shot my childhood mm. you know i watched it and it was like okay it's cool for what it is yeah you know, it's, I think it's whatever, you know, but, I think I think the funny part, I'll, I'll let you continue. I think the only thing that hurts that movie to me was just the fact that it's a, is it was a return to something that people were not expecting it to come out. People were expecting when you see something gone for so long, it returns back. They want something to be back the way it used to be, not a huge one fit 180. So I don't ne- So having it all women kind of took a little kind of took people sideways on that because it's like it feels like like this is not we we haven't seen this in years and then you bring it back in this form and i think it would have been more acceptable if it was more of a transition to that one like say that became a sequel or something maybe but coming back after many years there it just took people out of like a different loop of that like it's kind of like if they returned it would have accepted it better you think they would have accepted it better if there if it was like a a baton handoff a natural handoff yeah instead of just here's the news here's the new story and and take it that way it's like if they did turtles and it was all female all of a sudden and it's like that's not what we what the world wants now if you had a girl turtle that was added to it and (laughs) and which we know that exists for i know exists and for fox live action I got you. I got you on that. I remember it, and it was not good. Um, nightmare. It was nightmare. But still, still, that was a better approach than having wipe all those characters out and made it all new people. I, people want to be eased into new, not with the old. People want to start old and ease into new, I think. Not so much of like that. Anyways, go on to what you were saying. It, well, here's the thing. Going off of that, yes uh, – Folks don't deal with a drastic sudden change well. They don't, um, especially your your freaking neckbeard nerds, you know, who will raise hell on the internet. I don't get what all the fuss was about. You know, it was Ghostbusters. It was it was four women. It was four Saturday Night Live alum. You know, well, not all four. Uh, three alum, and then Melissa McCarthy, who is a treasure. They're all treasures. Uh, and they're all great actresses and and hilarious. The thing is, the problem wasn't with that it was all for me, the problem wasn't with that it was all women. It was that the writing just felt disjointed, you know. Um, it, the original the 84 Ghostbusters had, you know, you had Egon, you had Ray, you had um, uh, uh, Peter. And they all had very distinct personalities. Peter was sarcastic. He was a skeptic. He was a smart ass. Egon was just bizarre. He was extremely scientific, but he was very much, you know, whatever. And Ray was super enthusiastic. He was like, you're super spazzy dork, you know, about science. So he and Egon got along well. 
and, and they all put all the three of them played off of each other. And then you add Winston later, who's like, yeah, it, he's basically straight said what his character was when he was introduced. Yo, there's a steady paycheck. I'll believe whatever you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That, it's like, boom, you summarize this fucking character. Right yeah, there. yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, and that was his interaction. He was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. The Ghostbusters, the 2016 Ghostbusters movie didn't do as good a job with that. It almost seemed like you had three, three weirdo spazzes just in different weirdo spaz ways. And then you had Leslie, uh, Leslie Jones who came in uh, as the Winston type character, you know, and I was like, it okay. almost, it almost, and I'm just going back. I haven't seen this. It sounds like that they didn't make these characters original enough in that aspect. If these characters kind of stand out in their own chemistry style, instead of like, we got to have a Murray. We got to have uh, a Dan Aykroyd character. We got to have yeah. this one. Everybody, we want female edition of these kind of birds instead of like, let them be them. Yeah. Th- and that's the thing. Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie Jones are freaking hilarious and phenomenal. And I think it, they were done a disservice by, you know, having their their personalities all blend together i mean now i kind of want to watch the movie again just to kind of get a fresh perspective i may change my mind mm-hmm. but i they i will say those four those four ladies are freaking hilarious i've laughed i've laughed at all of them you know i i kate mckinnon is a kate mckinnon is a national damn treasure and people uh people are slowly realizing it but um and Chris Hemsworth as oh he's the dumb bohunk okay what I he had a few funny scenes but it, he didn't really add much to it you know that was probably one of the big issues yeah he he was, it was like Janine in the original she 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 wasn't like she was a she stood out because she was like yeah yeah whatever blah 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 she she was that sassy receptionist mm-hmm. you know she had character she had character beyond just like one or two traits yeah so but with this new ghostbusters after and it was a mixture of that and i think some people just want an excuse to fucking hate on hate on women so screw them i it can it can, there's i think it's all over the place for this movie yeah. i think yeah. that i but honestly to me compared to the afterlife afterlife you're getting you're i think this was the better way to do it because you are getting a continuation of what that is in that aspect and I'm not going to say the 2016, maybe it could have been a continuation, but I guess I just didn't see it compared to what this trailer is showing, the trailer showed me. But you feel like you're getting a little bit of the old, but you are seeing uh, evolve into this new new story. You are you're, getting you're a getting reference. Closure. You Kind of, right? Because like you're getting, you're getting the old house from one of the members. You're getting that phone call of what happens to them. As this new team is dealing with this new secret that's happening in this town that has the old Ghostbusters evolve compared to the 2016, it sounds like that a new original reboot story with no reference or any connection to the old one. Like I'm just going blind with this. I haven't seen this movie. They, but they, that- they have they have some of the old cast kind of make cameo appearances as different characters. And that was it. Okay. So after I seems like it has more connection. Now if 2016 kind of did something similar to that where like they are, they got like hand the baton like you were saying. Maybe this would have been caught a little bit better. But to me, it's that and just the fact it's been so long since the since that one. People just wanted this to come back, bring us back in slowly, then slowly go off what you want to do. Because I am down for new stuff. Like stuff has to change. Because no one wants the same exact thing again. Like, yes, you brought um, Ghostbusters. We don't want to see exactly play for play of another Ghostbusters like that. So I, I kind of differ on opinion. People do want the same thing, um, you know, whether it's in games or movies, whatever media. They just don't want it to be so obviously the same thing. The reason why Star Wars Force Awakens, a lot of people liked that of the new trilogy that was their favorite because it had – uh, it, got, it gave you that flavor of Star Wars A New Hope, mm-hmm. but it was just different enough. It hit the same, a lot of the same beats, you know. So, and then when it started going off on its own thing, you know, it had its problems, but people also just didn't like that. It was, that, what the hell? You know, so, people want the same thing. So I counter that and say that that might be true, but people don't want to play by play of the story that was the first Ghostbusters, right? We don't want, and even though, like, with, 
the Awakened, it almost has the same plot as A New Hope of a new Death Star, yada, 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 A, B, and C. Here, I don't think people want to see another chaos on top of a building and them making their way up to fight a, another monster again, <laughs> Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, at least it, ob it obviously being that. They don't want to see that. Um, I mean, then again, there was the game that came out in the, uh, uh, I think, 2013, 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters. That was fun. Like, I actually need to go back and finish it. I'm half, about halfway through it. And that was a natural, that would, it, it's considered unofficially Ghostbusters 3 because it takes place in the same timeline, same continuity. You're a new member, they're thinking about expanding the franchise, and it's revisiting some of the same old haunts. And it has some of the same voices, not everybody, but some of the same voices, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it, they got Bill Murray back. They got Dan Aykroyd back. They got, you know, uh, Ernie Hudson back, you know, they got some of the, a lot of the voices back to do that. And that's considered a Ghostbusters three and a lot. And it's, it's an underrated title. I mean, it got re-released for the PS4, mm -hmm. but it's an underrated, it's an underrated title yeah. because it hits those notes in a new way. Yeah. So. Either way, with the after with the afterlife, it's going to be interesting where the direction this is going to go. Of yes, now we see these kids taking the mantle. Are we going? To, if this movie does well, is that the direction they want? Is this going to be a super kid kid way, or are we going to get it where maybe maybe we'll get a collide of something else and they form together or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, don't forget Paul Rudd's in there, so he could easily be like the mentor slash eldest. Ghostbusters. Yeah, and um, and yeah. like, will this become a Stranger Thing? I guess in the next is this going to be all kids act, or is this going to continue on taking them back to the city? Maybe find a new story, and we get new characters added to that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe and, and that's and that's the thing. I that's why I'm kind of that's probably the most I'm going to watch of the Ghostbusters trailer and stuff because I want to be surprised. Okay. Um, I I will I will say, um, yeah, Stranger Things because that kid from stranger things is in it yeah that's um, what <laughs> uh hey you know what good for that kid he's, he's making money he was in it now he's in ghostbusters you know he, mm -hmm. but we're having this this whole it's the same that whole you know going back to nostalgia the same reason a lot of us play some of the same games over and over again you know i just said i played chrono trigger two times almost in a row mm -hmm. you know i'll play other we love the familiar we are we take comfort in the familiar, you know, getting psychological with it. Mm -hmm. We take comfort in the familiar, uh, you know, it, and, and, and that's why we kind of say, Oh, we, I mean, think about the way we compare games and describe games. Sometimes we use things we're familiar with old games to describe. Oh, it's like, you know, like the ascent that came out today. Oh, it's like cyber, cyber, cyberpunk Diablo. You know, mm -hmm. we love the familiar. And if you can introduce, if you can package the familiar in a new way, we will eat it up. It's like putting our medicine in cheese. We're like dogs. Sometimes you got to put our pills in pieces of cheese and give it to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe that's how they do with Ghostbusters Afterlife. They go in a different direction, but this is the piece of cheese they're giving us. So we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely see, see what happens with Ghostbusters. But with that, we do need to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for listening to this particular episode of Video Game News and Ghostbusters. And so... Hey, I took it back to a Ghostbusters game. I linked it up. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good job. And as you know, this is part of the In Game Boss Program Network, you know, Network Game and Other Variety Shows. So please check out all our great shows, including our Captainist show, the show I do with Jerome. You find us on our listening spot, definitely on YouTube if you're enjoying this video. Maybe subscribe. Enjoy some of our other great content that we have on here. We would love your support. Leave a comment down below. Tell us your thoughts about Ghostbusters or all any of the topics that we have. Uh, we do have plans this fall that I'm trying to going to be trying out for the network, uh, especially this show. So be ready for that. I don't want to announce anything yet. It'll be a, it'll just like Ghostbusters. It'll be familiar, but we're going to try new things in it. So <laughs> yeah. um, pick it up something nice. Yeah, but um, thank you so much, and we will catch you on our next stage. Stage clear. Let's go. New high score. Yeah. <laughs>